All right, guys, so first let's talk supplies about what we're gonna need for today's fire project um, using candy colors. So obviously you're gonna need your candy paints and here we have lemon yellow, grabber orange, and blood red. And these are the candy 2.0 paints from Createx Auto Air Colors. You're also gonna need some carry medium for the candy. So usually and typically you use some form of clear. And in this case, you know, to go with the Createx line of candies, we have the Createx line of clears. They have them in satin and gloss and matte. And so for today, we're gonna to be using matte clear uh, for our fire project. Uh, to transfer our candy into. Um, we do have, like I said, satin and gloss as well. And if you feel that you need a little bit of reduction once this is gone, it flows really good and it comes out of really good consistency. But if you feel it needs a little bit more, you could add about 10% 4011 reducer um, into your candy mix to get it going. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take our matte um, clear and take uh, into our bottle here and we're going to mix these up about 5 to 1, 6 to 1, somewhere around that range. There is not actually a dedicated guideline for how much candy you have to add to the clear. Uh, it's all depending on how much of a sh shade you want, right? So if you want uh, a really dark red you would add more red if you want a lighter red you add less red you don't add as much same thing with the orange and the yellow so for today's video we're gonna keep it simple we're gonna both go about five to one so we're gonna add you know about an ounce of uh, clear and then we're gonna add you know maybe <clears throat> a 0.2 ounce of candy so you know just we're just gonna mix up a little bit in here for today's project I'm also going to take a little bit of Wicked Opaque White, and that's what the fourth bottle over here is for. And we're going to mix a little bit of Wicked Opaque White, um, about one part paint to four parts reducer um, in that last bottle. So we are going to mix about a little bit up, um, but we're going to make the white um, because it is opaque. Uh, or opaque, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Uh, we're going to reduce this a little bit more, and that's what we're going to lay our base tones to lay our candy over. Um, so yeah, let's get this all mixed up, and then we'll come back on the application process. All right, guys. So we're going to try a different approach today, and I'm just going to kind of voice over me painting. I have other videos uh, showing this process, um, but. I'll just go ahead and walk you guys through it, um, you know, again. So here I am just making sure the white flows through the airbrush. And what I'm going to do is use these freehand curve stencil sets uh, to build up the flames. But I like to start off with just a freehand uh, kind of a layout for my flame, right? So either if you're using a reference or if you're just doing them, you know, kind of out of your head, I like to lay down kind of this this map of where I want the flames to go, right? So I lay down this little freehand kind of little quick sketch. And then using these freehand shields, this curves, um, which I do sell, they're available on mikesbrush.com if you're interested in, in buying one. Uh, you could always make them yourself using a blade and a piece of paper or something like that. But if you want a nice professional set, again, they are available at mikesbrush.com. There's a link down below. Uh, I'll also put a link for all the paints and all the <coughs> materials that I listed off. All those links will be down below. But as you can see, all I'm using is my curve here to kind of build up my freehand um, template that I gave myself using the white. And all we're gonna do is kind of go around and pull the white, you know, from the edge. We're gonna use the edge of the curves and then we're going to pull the white in towards the center of our flame. So that's kind of what I'm doing. It. And at the same time, I'm kind of building those flames into each other, right? So I want I want a, a flowing flame, you know, to crash into each other. So you add a little freehand um, to make the tips or make, you know, um, embers kind of coming out and, and whatnot.
whatnot, but you do want to build up what I call the meat of the flame, which is kind of the center of the flame, and that's what you want to build. Um, again, you don't want to go really heavy with any of this because we are going to build up a lot of colors on here, um, and we're going to lay white in between the colors. But again, pretty simple process. Um, again, you use your imagination, and it helps if you use a reference because then you kind of have a good idea of where to put these curves in and where they look good. Um, after you know a good amount of times of doing them, you get a good idea of how flame flows and the way you want it to look. Um, so yeah, practice makes perfect, I guess. But always make sure you go back with a little freehand. You know, kind of add in those those little variations and that randomness that flame has. So yeah, but from here. We're going to go ahead and switch off to our blood red candy. Again, the link to these candy colors um, will all be down below so that you can get yourself all these colors so you can do this right at home or on your own project. So you can see me here just loading in a little bit of that blood red. Uh, these candy colors do not have a pot life. Uh, so as long as you keep them in a sealed container, they should be good. Just have to give them another shake when you plan to use them again. Um, but here, all we're going to do is take our candy red and very generously kind of lay it over our white. Uh, you want to make sure you kind of stay within the white areas. You know, the red will not cover the black, uh, but you don't want to be so over generous as to overspray the whole complete area. You kind of, you kind of do want to just stay over the white that you sprayed. So you want to give it a good generous uh, coat or two and I think I do a couple coats here just to make sure that the red is really nice and red and you can see the red fades into the black and now you have those nice dark tones and light tones of the red kind of shining through. The candy makes this all possible by allowing those white shadows and those white shades that you did to just turn into those really faint, you know, really faint um, red colors that you see kind of blowing into the back. So again, from here, we're going to go ahead and switch back off to the white. Make sure you get that red on there really, really good. That way you don't have to come back and lay some more red later when you see a nice little white spot that, that just happened to get by you. But again, same process. We're going to come back with the white. We're going to build up the meat and you know, continue on. So coming back in with the white, you want to make sure you accent your flames, right? You don't want to just kind of go off into a random area and start adding, you know, more layers. You kind of want to accent what you did already. And again, building up what I call the meat of the flame, the center part of the flame. And again, coming off the stencil, you don't want to just use the curve. You want to come off of the curve towards the meat. Um, and that's kind of the best way I could describe it. Again, those those little tones that you leave in, those little shades that you leave in over the red, uh, those are going to get covered with the candy. The red is still going to shine through those nice deep tones of red. Use a little freehand in there, build it up, and make sure you use your curves wherever you feel like it's necessary, where you feel like it would kind of give the flame a little bit more mm, life. I guess we would say. Um, but yeah, make sure you build away from the stencil. Don't just use the stencil. I see a lot of flames where it's just the same curve going over and over and over, and that's not what you want to do. You really want to build up the, the meat of the flame <coughs> and, uh, you know, the center. Again, if you have a little mistake like that, just add some freehand. It's all good because flames don't really have a set way. You know, they, they kind of flow randomly, so... Make sure you add some of that randomness into your flames. Add some tips to make sure the flame is kind of ending off in that area. And yeah. So again, here we're going to come back in with the grabber orange. Switching off. Give it a good shake before you start. Make sure the paint's really mixed up well. And again, you just want to be real generous with the candy colors. And uh, lay those in um, pretty heavy. The orange is not really going to cover over the red, right? So the red is still going to shine through because the red is, is a, what I would call a stronger color. So the orange is going to cover the white, but it won't cover over the red. Um, 
make sure you give the candy color maybe a good five to ten minutes before you start laying the white in as well as let the white dry for a good five to ten minutes before you lay your candy orange in. Um, this helps avoid you know a lot of uh, what they call bleeding um, but as you can see as long as you're spraying in a nice warm dry area that the paint dries uh, pretty dang quick so you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, if you live in a humid area they do sell bleed checker uh, if you live in an area where the paint, you know, just takes a little longer to dry, applying some bleed checker on there just to be sure could, could help avoid any issues. But again, just lay a good generous amount of orange. As you can see, it already has covered the white, but it's not covering the red. You could still see the red in the back and those tones. You see how the red and the orange have combined to really give those nice orange tones. The candy is recommended to be sprayed with a 0.5 millimeter needle at 30 psi and using the UVLS clears it's actually uh, okay to leave out in the sun. UVLS stands for ultraviolet light stabilizing clear uh, so this will provide the ultimate protection for your candies as well as for the whites and any underlying paint uh, underneath. So again just going back to the white we're going to go ahead and build up our last and final white layer for the yellow. And this is where you want to be a little bit more careful, come in maybe a little little finer, a little more closer, build up that meat of the flame again as we've been talking. And yeah, give yourself those final curves that you see, any final flow that you want to build into it. And you want to be careful here not to lay, you know, yet white out in random areas. Uh, because if there's not a flame there and you just lay white and then you lay the yellow candy in it but there's no orange or red behind it it just it's gonna look very weird so the whole goal here is to build up the meat of the flame that's why I keep calling it the meat is when you cooking a steak or something you don't you know you don't worry too much about the fat you, you worry about cooking the, the meat so here's what we're doing. We're making dinner and we're cooking the meat. So make sure you get the meat of the flame nice and bright and get it ready to spray the yellow candy over. It's a quick and easy process and once you kind of understand what you're doing, uh, it's really easy to get a nice vibrant flame, something that looks like it's, it's almost in motion even though it's sitting still. And yeah, with enough practice, uh, you know, you get pretty good at it and get them done pretty quick. Again, I see a lot of flames where it's just the same curve over and over or where the curves are just kind of out on their own and then there's red curves, there's orange curves, and there's yellow curves, but there's nothing combining all three of the colors, which is what the flame does. If you ever look at pictures of flames, it's, it's a combination of red, orange, and yellow all kind of building up the fire. And here, for our final step, again, we're going to come in with the Lindman Yellow Candy. And don't forget, all the links to all these products will be down below. <clears throat> and using those links helps the channel bring you more videos like this. So if you enjoy these videos and want to see more videos like this, uh, we appreciate if you use those links to, for if you use those links to order your supplies. So, again, here we go, just going to come back in and we're going to give it a couple generous coats with the lemon yellow. The lemon yellow is a little bit lighter kind of a candy because it is, I guess, lemon yellow. It's it's not meant to be a dark. But uh, after you do a couple coats, it's going to give you that nice, very like bright, vibrant yellow. And again, don't worry too much about the yellow going over the orange or the red because it's not going to cover that. The red will shine through, the orange will shine through. And what you would be left with is the yellow just shining over the white areas that you sprayed. So here, we're just going to go ahead and lay some few coats. I'm turning up the pressure because I've been turning down the pressure when I lay the white. And then, you know, you got to turn the pressure a little bit back up uh, when we spray the candy coats. So here we go. We're just going to finish this all up. I'm going to show you what it looks like without clear on it and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you what it looks like with clear.
As always, uh, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate all the support. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button. If you really enjoy these videos and you want to help support the channel, there's a join button down below. You can become a part of the Skull Squad and it all helps to bring you more videos like this. Whether you like fire, whether you like painting on RC bodies or motorcycles or skulls or whatever it is, I'm pretty sure we have a video or an upcoming video about it. Um, so yeah, as always, thank you guys for all the support. We'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys like this one.